Okay, so um, this last part of diabetes, I want to explain this idea of um, hyper and hypoglycemia. So the I, last video I explained about how important it is for diabetics to take their medication to keep their blood glucose as close to normal as possible because there is problems with hyperglycemia and also hypoglycemia. And I mentioned a little bit about the symptoms of hyperglycemia. Um, which are highlighted in orange, and then also in here highlighted in orange. Okay, um, but I do want to take some um, time to also explain hyperglycemia and the complications that results from that, and also hypoglycemia and how it can lead to critical hypoglycemia and death. Okay, so let's take a look at summarize some of the ideas first. So there, it's a little confusing for students to understand because. You think when there's hyperglycemia, there should be plenty of energy, but that is not always the case because if you have hyperglycemia, but you can't unlock the cells to use the glucose, it is still the cells are lacking glucose. So let's take a look at this situation. So we have blood, right? So the blood has high levels of glucose. Let's just put the glucose in here. Okay. But if there's, so this is hyperglycemia. Okay, so the hyperglycemia resulted from the fact that there is low insulin activity. This can come from the fact that they have low insulin activity because they don't make insulin in type 1 or there's insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes and gestational diabetes. So they're hyperglycemia, low insulin activity. So what's going on then is the cells. Okay, will have low glucose and low ATP. Okay, and that low glucose and the low ATP is what you see all the symptoms of fatigue, hunger, because it's wanting the energy. And it's also um, um, seeing the fact that then these cells, if they can't do it, will go into fat burning mode. The cells will then do fat breakdown for energy. So imagine now, even when the patient do eat food, the glucose just keeps going up, but they're not getting into the cells, so they go into fat breakdown, and that fat breakdown keeps on increasing the ketone. And that is what leads to DKA, okay? Because they're solely dependent on fat, especially in type 1, on the fat breakdown, because if they have no insulin activity, they basically have no glucose to, for energy. They have 100% dependent on that fat breakdown, and that causes the problem of DKA. And this is very, very dangerous in type 1s. is much more common because in type 2, they have some glucose uptake, so that is not going to be as quick of a development. The high glucose in the blood, this is what is going in to the kidney causing the high urine and then the high glucose in the urine. Okay. So that's where you're going to get the uh, dehydration and the glucose. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about is that because, because the patient is spending a lot of their time in hyperglycemia and poorly managed diabetes. So if you look on this graph, this is a lot of hyperglycemia. So day in and day out, they're in much higher blood glucose than they should be if they manage their blood glucose. So the hyperglycemic state is causing damage day in and day out. 
So what it does is that it causes the blood vessels to be damaged. Okay. And the blood vessel is damaged and that's in the eye, then you have blindness. If it's in the kidney, then you have renal fading. Okay. And then in the brain, you have stroke, right? And a heart and heart attack. So the leading cause of blindness is diabetes. And the leading cause of renal failure is blindness. So if you go into a dialysis clinic, a lot of the patients there that lost their kidney are diabetics. And also without, with poor blood flow and then the um, blood glucose being high and the poor blood flow and circulation, you can lead to neuropathy. So resulting in um, unable to feel the, the pain, okay? So if this happens a lot in feet, when the feet, the wounds in the feet goes undetected and then they become really infected and then the body will then have to, will be, uh, will have to amputate the leg. So the number one cause of amputation is diabetes as well, due to the fact that the hyperglycemia is causing damage to the blood vessels. Conversely, hypoglycemia is very dangerous. So how, do, how does a diabetic become hypoglycemic? So there's a number of reasons um, that happens. So remember, insulin stores away glucose. But if a body knows that we're in homeostasis, in a normal individual, the insulin is not released. But in diabetics, they have to take medication or do insulin injection to get that activity. So this happens if there's poor management of the uh, of the of the insulin. So this typically happens when there's too much insulin for the meal that's eaten. So when there's too much glucose is going into muscle cells and liver cells and fat, and that lowers the blood glucose to critically low level. So this typically happens when a patient injects too much insulin. The dose is too high or the medication is too high or they inject insulin and they don't eat food, no food. Or sometimes it happens where they inject insulin, eat little food. That can also happen. Or if they inject insulin, ate a smallish meal, which normally they'll be fine, but then they went and exercise like, uh, really strongly or they had a um, stressful um, day at work then they can, the blood glucose can drop, okay? This is especially difficult in times of um, in pu doing puberty when um, a patient will inject insulin and they eat their normal meal, but then if they're growing, then the blood glucose can drop very quickly. So hypoglycemia is, um, can become very dangerous because then the brain cells do not get enough glucose and that can cause um, diabetic coma, hypoglycemic coma, and death, okay? If a patient starts having the shaking, which the epinephrine is kicking in, and then sweating and blurry vision, they should immediately get some glucose source, such as juice, um, something into their body um, to get the glucose back up to normal levels before the central nervous system shuts down.